arrays. So what is arrays? So arrays is a concept. Uh, it deals with the storage, right? So before going to use arrays, we have a concept called variables, right? So what is the purpose of variable? So variables, uh, with the help of data types, we can store the values. Arrays, it's it's always deals with, uh, just a minute. So, arrays. So, it deals with storage. Before going to introduce this arrays topic, we have uh, variables, right? It deals with storage. So, what is a variable? With the help of a data type, we are going to provide storage. With the help of data types, we used like, for example, int a is equal to 10. So what is the meaning of this line? Whenever I'm going to assign any value to here, A is a variable, 10 is a value, and this is a data type, right? It, it defines or it decides the memory storage. So int is nothing but two bytes. Let's say here I have a variable and the value is 10 and uh, it's a two bytes of memory. It holds two bytes of memory, right? So if you want to create if, if you want to create any kind of a storage, we have to use both data type and the variables, right? So that's fine. We don't have any issues. For example, I want to store 10 values. I want to store 10 different values like A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, C is equal to 10, D is equal to 15 and so on. I want to store 10 values. So manually, I have to create each and every value. SR, no. So int b, int c, int d. So like this, I have to create manually. No problem. 10 values, any human being can create. For example, I want to store 100 values. Is it possible? I want to create 100 values. So is it possible? So it will take a lot of time. First point. It will take a lot of time. Yes or no? And the second point, uh, uh, time is nothing but time complexity. In terms of uh, computer knowledge, time complexity. It will, even computer, the compiler will take a lot of time to assign each and every value to uh, memory, right? Next. Yeah. To overcome this particular issue, sorry for the delay. Wait a minute. Yeah. So if I want to store 100 values, no problem. It will take some time, but I can create. In case if I want to create 10,000 or more than 10,000 values, so it will take a lot of time. First point. And the second point, 
if i create manually like this int b int c int d how many variable names i have to assign i have to always uh, create a new variable name like a1 b1 c1 d1 again a2 b2 c2 so that is assigning a name to a value is also a problem right so we have a two problems with this variables and data types so the first problem is we have to provide individual variable name and we have to assign proper data type if you want to deal with less num uh, i mean to say less values you can go with the variables and data types in terms of in case if you want to store more than 10 values or more than 100 values you have to use arrays concept we this is not correct like using variables and data types it's not correct you cannot create values manually like this this is not at all correct this is the first disadvantages of disadvantage of these variables and data types first disadvantage is time complexity second disadvantage is we have to assign each and every name we have to assign individual name to one particular value so user i mean to say developer should create or should assign individual variable names so it will take lot of time first one time complexity and the second one is creating or assigning names to the values these two are the disadvantages of variable and data types in case if you want to create 10 this 10 values it's okay you can do it but if you want to deal with multiple data if you want to deal with more data you have to use a concept called arrays so what is the definition of an array let's see the definition of an array collection of similar data items under a single name so please observe this uh, just a minute what happened to this second meeting just a minute guys i think now it's visible yeah what is an array array is nothing but collection of similar data items under a single name here you have to remember two points collection if you want to deal with multiple data multiple data is nothing but we have to call it as a collection right collection of similar data items what is the meaning of similar data items whatever the data you want to group it up it should be belong it should belongs to either integer or string or float only one particular data item similar data items one particular data type for example if you want to store 10 11 12 13 90 60 70 50 49 all these are integer values right so you can store these values under array using array sorry you can store all the values using arrays for example 10.6 9.2 3.1 6.5 so all these are belongs to float values you can use 
arrays to store all these values. For example, names, Hema, Arup, Aira, Ansha, and so on. So all these are belongs to strings, right? I can use arrays to store the values. So collection of similar data items under a single name. So you have to give only one particular variable name. If I give A, all these values belongs to this A variable. If I give B, all these float values belongs to B. If I give C, all these string values belongs to C. Only one name we are assigning. Only one single name we are assigning. So collection of similar data items under a single name. So I have a question here. Ma'am, you assigned all integer values here and all float values and all string values. No problem. But I want to store values like this. I want to store, for example, one student is there. So student name, roll number, first subject marks 1, marks 2, for example, marks 3. Let's take an example. Student name is, for example, John. Roll number, for example, 192. His M1 marks, for example, 24. M2 marks 12.6. M3, for example, 20. If you observe here, John is a string value. 192 roll number is an integer value. Again, integer value and float value again integer value let me add one more attribute here that is uh, report or result so result for example pass for example a so this is a character type okay so now please look at the screen i want to store one student record this is a record, right? Name of the student and marks, roll number and his grade. Let's take grade. So here if you observe, first one is a string. Integer, integer, float, integer, character. But arrays deals with, what is the definition of an array? Collection of similar data items under a single name. Collection of similar data items under a single name but these are not similar data items first one is a string second one is integer third one is integer float one is third uh, fourth one is a float and fifth one again integer sixth one is character so in c language your arrays will not support different type of data so arrays does not support these kind of storage so definition of an array is collection of similar data items. These are not similar data items. Right? So, you cannot provide storage for these kind of values. So you have to give only one group of data, either integers or float or string values or character. So, you have to give only one particular group data type data. So, that is the first disadvantage of arrays in C language. Especially in C language, we have one disadvantage that is arrays does not provide storage for multiple data items. Multiple values are different, multiple data items are different. So this is the disadvantage. See, you have to understand the definition first. And is there any advantages or disadvantages? You have to understand. And one more important point before, for example, here the topic is arrays. What's there before arrays? What the developers used instead of arrays? What was there? You have to understand it. So what is the what is the main problem to introduce these arrays? So variable data types individually we cannot create multiple variables and we cannot create uh, more values, right? Because two disadvantages, one is the time complexity and the second one is we have to give a lot of variable names. So to overcome that issue, they introduced a concept called arrays. So arrays definition is 
collection of similar data items under a single name. Arrays will provide storage for multiple items. But those items should belong to one particular group, either integers or float or character or string. Any one particular group, not multiple groups, multiple data items. Arrays does not support in C language. So that's the disadvantage. And the second point. Yeah. So what is the syntax of creating arrays? So what is the syntax? You have to give data type. Array name. So whenever you are going to provide array name, it should followed by the square brackets is equal to values. So each and every value should separated by a comma. So data type that can be anything. Let me give int array name. For example, take a square brackets is equal to you can give any values. So ma'am, I have a doubt. So here I have to provide size. Yes, you can define size or you can leave it like that. Computer automatically assigns size based upon your right side values. But providing size is good, but it will execute without providing size whenever you are providing the values. For example, if I'm not going to provide any kind of values, if I write A is equal to Sorry, int a, open bracket, closed bracket. If I write like this, so it's syntactically wrong. You have to provide some size because right side, I don't have a values here. Here, I don't have values. So compiler should assign some value to your variable, some memory to your variable. If you provide right side values based on the right side value, automatically it will uh, assign the memory. For example, if you're not going to assign any kind of a value, so you in that case, you have to provide the size. I already explained first disadvantage of arrays. That is, it will not provide, it, arrays does not support multiple data items under a single name, right? So remember, that's the first disadvantage. We have one more di disadvantage that I will explain. So what is the definition of an array? Collection of similar data items, all these three, items or belongs to integer collection of similar data items under a single name here array name is a so whenever i am going to execute this particular line so let me write that line data type a here I'm not providing anything. If you want, you can provide. Okay, let me provide some five. Size of the array. 10, 20, 30. So now, whenever I'm going to execute this particular line, how compiler assign memory? Let's see how it will assign the memory. So compiler is executing this particular line. So 10, 20, 30. So by checking this particular syntax, it will create memory in the backend. So let me create the memory. What is the size of the array? 5. What is the array name? A. So automatically it will create 5 memory locations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what is the first value? 10. Second value, 20. Third value, 30. Right? So how to access the elements of an array? So using index number. Assigning is fine. Here we assigned values. Arrays deals with the multiple elements. Right? So that is fine. If I have a, if I have int a is equal to 10, if I call a value, I will get the value 10. Yes or no? That is fine. 
but if i have a multiple values under a single name how to access the elements of an array a so you should understand this how to read the values from the array so with the help of index number so what is index number so index number is nothing but whenever you are creating not you compiler is creating memory location automatically uh, memory location for arrays automatically it will create index values so index array indexes will always starts with zero so where is the first one starts with zero so this is the first one zero one two three four and so on so index number what is index number size is equal to minus 1 so you should understand what is index number index number is nothing but kind of an address of each and every element in array address of each and every element see 0 is the address of 10 1 is the address of 20 2 is the address of 30 okay index number formula is size minus 1 so what is the size of this array 5 5 minus 1 4 see 4 0 to 4 values 0 1 2 3 4 index values will always starts from 0 when the first element is 1 second element is 2 and so on n minus 1 n is nothing but size of the array n minus 1 so, for example, if I want to access this particular element, I have to give a of, see these, these are the uh, square brackets, right? So, if you want to create any array, you have to define the data type like integer and specify the name of the array that is a followed by square brackets to mention the size or element address. So, here is the name of the array A and here within this particular bracket, I have to write the index value. If I write A of 0, A is the array name, 0 is the address of the element. So, you will get the value 10. A of 0 value is 10. If I write A of 2, so what is the A of 2 value? A is the array name. 2 is the address of the element. You will get the value 30. So, if I write A of 3, so what is the A of 3 value? Is there any value? No. So, is that okay if I get 0? No, 0 is also value, right? No. This is not correct one. So, here the second disadvantage of an array is if you provide size of the array, for example, here the size of the array is 5. But I passed only three elements. How many memories are I am wasting here? Two memory locations I am wasting. Right? For example, if I write A of 5, but I am going to pass uh, 40, 60, I want to write 40, 60, 70. Can I provide six values? No, you cannot provide six values because I mentioned the size of the array 5. Right? The second disadvantage is you have to provide correct number of size. Whenever you are going to pass 10 elements, you have to assign size of the array is 10. But ma'am, we don't know how many elements that I want to pass. In that case, don't mention size. Just write the elements here. Automatically compile and assign the signs. Okay. Here you are wasting the memory. So that is the second disadvantage. If I write A of 5, you have to pass at least 5 elements. In case if you pass only 3, remaining 2 memories got wasted, right? So, that is a second disadvantage. So, if you, if you don't want to waste the memory, don't pass the size of the array. Just pass the elements. Automatically, array will adjust the size of the array. So, now let's see how to access the elements with the help of index numbers. So now I want to print. So as the array is integer type, I'm using percentile D comma A of, if I write zero, 
So what is the A of 0 element? 10. So I will get the value 10. Let me execute this code. See, I got the output 10. So let me mention A of, this is 0 at position, this is 1, this is 2. Let me provide A of 2. I got 30. Now I want to pass 3. See, in online compiler, you will get 0. But 0 is not correct answer, right? So if this is actually a default value in online compiler. If you execute the same code in your Turbo C, you will get some garbage, some different value. Yes, you will get some different garbage value. If you want, please note down this and execute it in your Turbo C. You will get a different garbage value. If you execute the same thing in online GDB or any other online compiler, you will get zero because online compilers does not support garbage values because we are not storing any values right in online compiler. Basically in a Turbo C or any other compiler uh, which are installed in the computer, uh, the memory management is different in, uh, in terms of online uh, compilers. See. My point is online compilers are different and uh, installed compilers are different. Installed compilers memory management is different and online compiler memory management is different. So if you execute the same code in Turbo C or any other installed IDE, you will get some garbage value. Sometimes you will get negative values also. But if you execute the same program in online GDB or online compilers, you will get zero. So now, here, I don't want this 20 value. I want to change it. So how to change a specific value? So again, you have to use the same array name, A of, sorry, not array name, index number. So instead of a 20, I want to pass, for example, 50. So what is the size, what is the index value of this 20? This is 0 and this is 1. So, A of 1 is equal to 50. So, let me call A of 1. Initially, A of 1 value is 20. Now, I am changing A of 1 value to 50. Let's see. See, see the updated value. I am able to change the value. See, now output is 50 instead of 20. Right? So first point, how to create arrays, right? We have to follow the syntax that is data type, array name, followed by values, right? So second one, index numbers. So if you want to store any kind of a values, we have to use index numbers. Index numbers will always start from 0. Now, I want to give one, one simple and useful example program using this arrays topic. Now, I want to create one simple application that is, so first you should ask user or any student to enter number of subjects. So before going to start this application, uh, I just want to solve the second disadvantage of arrays. What is the second disadvantage of arrays? Size. If I provide int a of 5, I have to pass 5 elements, right? At least 5 elements. If I pass less than 5 elements, so automatically memory wastage, right? In case, if I write a of 5, I cannot pass more than five elements. So this is the disadvantage of an array. Uh, just a minute. This is the disadvantage of array, right? Let me solve this disadvantage.
जस्ट मिनट गैस yeah so the second disadvantage is uh, first disadvantage it cannot store multiple data elements in a single array right that we cannot solve in c language but the second disadvantage that is size how to deal with the size uh, how to uh, check the memory waste uh, the memory management how to control it we can solve this particular size related issues array size related issues so what is size related issue if i provide array size 5 i have to provide either 1 or 0 or 2 3 4 at least 5 elements i have to provide if i provide less than 5 elements memory got wasted right that is a one point for example i assigned memory 5 uh, we cannot see the shared online gdb okay how how many of you are not able to view the um compiler online compiler is there any problem with my screen majority of you are writing emails please change your subject write the mail content in the mail uh, content space please don't add the messages in the subject block i received an email ma'am after this explain about change an array element okay then what i didn't get your point please uh, mention the question okay yeah the second disadvantage of an array is dealing with the storage if i mention size i have to provide at least for example here is the size 5 i have to provide at least five elements in case if i want to assign more than five elements your array will not support because the array size is fixed i cannot provide more memory so how to solve this particular issue let's see in this case i don't want to waste the memory at the same time i have to give a chance to the user to store how many items they want to store they can store directly so let me open online gdb are you able to view the online gdb i mean my browser compiler yes or no please raise your hand are you able to view the online gdb page online compiler page the majority of you are able to view okay no problem so let's solve that uh, size related issue first point here i am going to write one array that is a here i am not providing uh, okay wait 
first i'm going to ask uh, initialize one value that is n and first i'm asking printf enter number of elements so here i'm asking user how many elements you want first i'm not creating any array first i'm asking user how many elements he want and I'm assigning that value to n variable. For example, if I want to assign 10 values, I will assign 10. So automatically my compiler will create only 10 memory, right? For example, I want to create a memory for only two elements. So it will create memory for only two elements. Now I'm creating an array int. Here my array name is a. And within this bracket, I'm providing n. So now let me explain till here. I hope you understand this point. Here I am not wasting any memory. There is no memory wastage in this particular example program. So first please look at the screen. So first I am providing memory for n. So let me create n memory. So next it will jump to this particular line, printf, enter number of elements. By reading this line, you will enter how many elements you want. For example, I want to write 6 and I am assigning this 6 value to n variable. So n value will become 6. Next line, int a of n. So what is a here? a is the array name. Right? a is the array name. So what is the n value? 6. So what is the size of the array? 6. I have to provide 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, n value is 6. What is the index value? Index value is nothing but size or n minus 1. So, what is n value? 6 minus 1. So, index values 0 to 5. Right? So, you have to create array in the runtime so that you cannot waste the memory. You will not waste the memory of an array. So if you use int a of 5, 10, 6, 60, in that case, for example, manually here I am providing 6, but I provided only 3 elements. Remaining 3 elements got wasted, right? So here is the array size 6. I want to provide 12 elements. So your array will not provide memory for the remaining 6 elements. So to overcome this particular issue, you have to create the array in the runtime. So this code will, these four lines will help you to create the array in runtime. Now, let's see. So array got ready. Now I'm going to ask user to enter elements. So I'm going to use for loop because see, I want to ask user to enter the elements repeatedly, right? So for that, I have to use for loop. So, what is the syntax of for loop? Uh, initialization int i. i should start from 0. i less than r is equal to here you have to write not less than r equal to n. Only less than because not till nth value, right? The index value is n minus 1. So, you have to write condition i less than n i plus plus. If this condition is true, I have to ask printf enter element. So by reading this message, user will enter the element. With the help of scanf, you have to assign that element to your array. So here I have n variable. So I used uh, ampersand and to assign the values. But here I have to use the ampersand at the same time. I have to use the array name that is a and I have to give the index value that is i. So now let me explain till here. Everybody, please look at the screen. 
what is the first step n value right so let me create a memory for n next enter number of elements now i want to create a memory for three elements so what is the n value 3 next int a of n that means i have to create array this because this is the syntax of creating an array see this is a syntax of creating an array yes or no data type array name size so what is n value 3 here array name is a 1 2 3 0 1 2 because n minus 1 3 minus 1 2 so i'm done with this line next for loop first iteration loop number 1 i equal to 0 so i is equal to 0 i less than n so i value is 0 less than what is n value 3 condition true if the condition is true i have to execute this particular two lines right so what is the first line printf enter element by reading this message i have to enter some element let me enter for example 4 i have to assign this 4 to with the help of a scanf i am assigning this 4 to a of i value a of i what is a of i value 0 a of i 0 value is 4 so please look at the screen a of 0 a is array name 0 is the index value what is the value 4 again it will jump to i plus plus second condition initially i value 0 now 0 plus 1 1 i equal to 1 again it will check the condition i less than n what is the current i value 1 less than what is the n value 3 1 less than 3 condition true if the condition is true again you have to execute these two lines so again it will ask print f enter element now i am entering for example 9 this 9 i am assigning it to a of i so a of what is i value now 1 a of 1 value is 9 so a is the array name 1 is the index value here value is 9 next again it will jump to i plus plus third iteration i value will become 1 plus 1 2 again it will check the condition true less than 3 condition true if the condition is true again i have to execute these two lines again it will ask you to enter element let's say i am going to enter for example 6 the 6 i am assigning to a of i with the help of scanf a of i what is the a of i value 2 a of 2 value is 6 so a is array name 2 is the index a is array name 2 is the index so what is the value 6 so again it will jump to i plus plus i value is 2 now i will become 3 again it will check the condition 3 less than 3 condition true or false less than 3 condition false so it will jump out of the loop so i entered three elements because here i entered number of elements are three so four nine six these three are my elements so am i wasting any memory here no i'm not wasting if i enter 10 it will ask you to enter 10 elements if i enter 100 it will create a memory for 100 elements so in this case i'm not uh, I'm not um, disturbing my memory location or I'm not wasting any kind of a memory. Let's see. Let me execute this. See, enter number of elements. I'm going to enter, for example, nine elements. So it should ask enter element, enter element nine times. Five. One, two, three, four. Five already entered. Six. Seven. 8, 7, 8, 9. See, I entered, I want to enter 9 elements. So, it, it asked me to enter 9 elements. So, after that, uh, console exit because I don't have any other code after that. Right? Now, I have to write code for print the elements. Whatever the elements I entered, I want to print all of them. So, if you want to insert the values, you have to use for loop. So, insert values 
into an array and here I'm creating array creating an array a runtime so I'm not wasting any kind of a memory here see these are the comments don't worry okay Yeah, now I want to read the values from the array. So how to read values? Again, I have to use for loop. So for initialization, j is equal to 0. I am using a different variable j less than n same condition j plus plus. So here my point is I want to print the elements right. Print it. array elements are Of J. Let me execute it. So I'm going to enter three. I have to enter three elements 45, 23, 90. Uh, array elements are 45, 23, 90. Okay, three times it's repeated. Just a minute. Four elements, 34, 87, 56, 4. See, array elements are 34, 87, 56, 4. So I have to explain only this particular code. So I entered this 4, 9, 6. So let me enter the remaining I have to explain this code. I successfully entered three elements, four, nine, six, right? Let's see how to read the elements from the array. So what is the next line? Print up array elements are. So you will get this line automatically. Uh, no, array. Array elements are. Next, I have for loop. First iteration, j is equal to zero, j less than n. So, j value is 0 less than, what is the n value? n value is 3, 0 less than 3, condition true. If the condition is true, you have to execute this particular line. What is this line? Print f. You have to print something. So, what is that something? A of j value. So, A of j. What is the j value? A of 0. You have to print A of 0 value. What is array A index value 0? A of 0 value is 4. You will get 0 a of index value that is 4. So next again it will jump to this particular increment value. So j plus plus initially j value is 0. Now j value will become 1. Again it will check the condition 1 less than. What is the condition n value that is 3. 1 less than 3. Condition again true. Then it will jump to this particular print statement. You have to print a of j value. A of, what is the current J value? That is 1. A of 1 value is 9. Next, third loop. Again, it will jump to J plus plus. Initially, J value 1. Now, J value will become 1 plus 1. That is 2. Again, it will check the condition. 2 less than R is equal to 3. Condition true. The condition is true. Again, you have to execute this particular line. A of J. Current J value is 2. A of 2 value. A of 2 value is 6. Fourth iteration, 
again it will jump to j plus plus j will become 3 3 less than 3 condition false so it will jump out of the loop and the output is 4 9 6 so with this particular code I am not wasting any kind of a memory. If user wants to store 100 elements, he can enter 100, 100 over here and he can enter 100 elements and he can print all the 100 elements. Because I am not providing the size, default size. First, I am asking user. Based upon that, I am creating an array. Right? Same code will help you to create a memory for hundred values also but for now I am taking ten values one two three oh wait ten values one two three four five six seven eight nine ten see L array elements are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Ma'am, I don't want to print this enter element, enter element, enter element all the time. In that case, you have to just cut this and write it before the loop. Now, look at the screen. Enter elements, I want to enter five elements. So, enter element four. See, my compiler, my cursor is waiting for the second element. It asked only one time. Second element, third element fourth element, fifth element. So, array elements are 4, 8, 3, 7, 1. Right? So, we can solve the second disadvantage that is size related issue. We can solve it using uh, create, I mean, using this particular program. In this particular program, I created an array in the runtime. First, I am asking user how many elements they want. After deciding that, I am creating an array and providing that number of elements as a size. So, here I am storing that value in n variable and using that n variable, I created an array in the runtime. If you have any kind of questions, please send email. Tomorrow I will explain one simple example program using the same concept. Not simple program, it's kind of an application. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I mean, uh, please send an email. I'm so sorry for not enable enabling the chat over here. So... If you have any kind of a questions, please uh, send an email. And this Saturday, I'm going to conduct one test. So 
please be ready with the basics of C programming like uh, variable data types, if for loop, while loop, do while loop, arrays concept and uh, break, continue, go to statements. I explained all these statements, right? So I'll cover these arrays this week. Uh, I need more time to cover more real-time example programs. So please be prepared. So someone is asking me to assign some assignment programs. Okay, today I will assign one simple program. Uh, instead of assigning these assignments, okay, okay, let me explain that assignment. Use the same concept, same arrays concept. You have to design one simple application. That is, uh, consider I'm a student. Okay. So, first year, second year, third year, final year. First years will have a six subjects. Second years will have a five subjects. Third year will have a six subjects. Fourth years will have only two subjects, right? Uh, according to the JNTU rule, these are the theoretical subjects. As an example, that's it. So can, you have to design an application. First, you have to ask a student how many subjects are there. Okay, then using an array, you have to calculate average. You have to ask student marks first. Subject marks 1, marks 2, marks 3. So, for example, if I have 6 subjects, you have to ask me, enter 6 subject marks. So, after entering all the subject marks, you have to calculate the total and average. This is your assignment. So I am going to repeat the assignment. First, you, you have to design one simple application. Create a simple program or application where you have to ask student subject marks, subject wise marks, first subject marks, second subject marks, third subject marks, fourth subject marks. If I enter, I have three subjects, you should ask only enter three subject marks. If I enter four subjects, you have to ask only four subject marks. If I enter, I have six subjects, you have to ask enter first subject marks, second subject marks, third subject marks, fourth subject marks, fifth subject and sixth subject. After six subject marks, you have to calculate total. You know how to calculate total, right? M1 plus M2 plus M3 plus M4 plus M5 plus M6, you will get total. Then you have to calculate average. So what is the formula to calculate average? Total marks by number of subjects, right? So you have to print the average. Okay, that is your assignment. Please submit the assignment before, I mean, what is the time now? It's 8.30. Try to finish this assignment by tomorrow 1 p.m. and send it to me. Okay. So, if you have any kind of a questions, please. Uh, Ma'am, your screen is not appearing. Okay, just a minute. Just a minute. I'm so sorry. I'll explain this assignment. Just a minute. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, let me explain this assignment again. See, first you have to ask number of subjects. Okay, because first years will have six subjects. Second years will have five subjects. Third years will have four subjects. And final years will have three subjects. According to the JNT rule. It depends upon your semester also. 
so first you have to ask number of subjects okay so if i enter number of subjects for example 3 you have to ask enter first subject marks second subject marks third subject marks if i enter i have a six subjects so you should ask me to enter six subject marks okay after entering all the subject marks you have to calculate total okay after calculating total you have to calculate average how to calculate average total by number of subjects right we know that formula so here you have to use arrays and create this application if i enter six you have to ask me six subject marks if i enter three you have to ask three subject marks but here the mandatory point is you have to enter enter first subject marks enter second subject marks enter third subject marks you have to ask like this okay so i will enter first subject marks second subject marks third subject marks then you have to calculate the total then you have to calculate the average so you have to submit this uh, before 1 pm tomorrow okay if you have any questions you can always mail me Thank you so much. Good night.